Today we're gonna make some French onion soup. So let's get right into this French onion soup. This is one of my favorite soups to make, but it does take a little time. It's not one of those where you can just substitute a few things and it only takes 15, 20 minutes. This one's gonna take every bit of an hour. So let's get started. And the first thing I wanna do, we're using garlic. So I would love to roast the garlic. And to roast this garlic, all we're gonna do is take a one bulb of garlic here. We're just gonna cut the top off of it, just a little bit. Now we're gonna take this aluminum foil, put it in the middle and just kind of wrap it up making it so that it will sit upright. And we're gonna take just a bit of oil. I've got some olive, you can use olive oil. I've got some vegetable oil here. Put it right on top. And wrap this up. We're gonna throw it right into the oven sitting upright like that. Now let's talk about the star of this show, these onions. I've got three different varieties here. I've got a red onion, I've got a white onion, and a Vidalia. I like to mix it up a little bit. You can use all of the same. But I'm using five large onions here. And listen, this is gonna feel like a ton of onions, but this is gonna sweat down so much. This is gonna take about 45 minutes to cook these down. The goal is to caramelize them, and to do that right, it takes a lot of time, and you gotta have a little bit of patience here, which I have very little of. Now, the best way to do this is to use a mandolin. We're gonna try to slice these really thin, and we want them to be really even slices. Uh, but not everybody has a mandolin sitting at home, so we're gonna use it, do it the old-fashioned way with a good, sharp knife. Now I'm gonna make a small cut right there at the end, and we're gonna go to the root end. And now we can peel them. Now, one thing about this recipe is that it's kind of like watching the notebook. It really doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna end up crying. Whenever you're cutting this many onions, it's just kind of hard to avoid unless you uh, get some ski goggles or something like that. All right, we've got our onions peeled, and I'm telling you, it's already starting to kind of hit me, but I've got one stick of butter here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over some medium heat. Get this melting while we start cutting up these onions. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take a knife. I've got a chef's knife here. And we're just gonna cut into some thin slices here. And you wanna try to keep this as consistent as possible. Now, if you're not comfortable with a knife, this is a good chance to practice. Uh, be sure to kind of make a claw so that whenever you're slicing down, your, your fingertips aren't gonna get hit. And just kind of confidently go through keep them uniform. You can kind of increase the speed as you go along. And as I'm cutting them, I'm gonna go ahead and start tossing them right in there. This is just a recipe that means a lot to me, okay? Uh, I know I get really passionate when I make this, but it just means a lot. Now, we've got these onions cut, and I know looking at this pot, you're gonna be thinking, this is way too many onions. You're gonna be so surprised by how much it shrinks down after it gets to caramelizing. And now we're gonna go in with a big pinch of salt. This salt is gonna kinda of help the process. This salt is gonna draw a lot of that moisture out. It's gonna help speed that up. If you wanna speed it up even more, you can add a little bit of sugar. That helps with that caramelization process as well. So we're gonna start giving this a mix. It's gonna take it a minute for it to start going down. But this is, this is gonna take quite a bit of time. We're looking at 45 to 60 minutes here to do it right. And the longer you let this go, the more you get to that good caramelization that we're looking for here, the more flavor it's gonna have. So we're starting to get just a, a little bit of a softening of these onions. This is why it's starting to go down in volume. And every few minutes we're going by, we're gonna be uh, stirring this to make sure that we're getting even cooking and you don't uh, have anything sticking, but this is gonna take a while. And if you need to, you can add in a little bit more butter to give it some more liquid. Uh, it looks like at first you're gonna need to do that. But once you start to uh, get this volume down a little bit, you'll be able to get a better judgment on how much of uh, that butter you need. So we've got our onions cooking down. Now let's start talking about how we're gonna start building layers of flavor. And one of the ways I love to do that are with some herbs. Now I'm gonna go with some rosemary, some thyme, and some bay leaves. Now I could certainly go through and chop up the rosemary and pull the, the thyme uh, leaves apart, but instead of doing that, what we're gonna do so we're actually just gonna wrap it up into some uh, butcher's twine and we're gonna uh, keep it all together in one little bundle and we'll cook it together like that. So just lay out some twine here, kind of roll things up together so they're somewhat condensed. Wrap your twine around it a few times. This is gonna hold everything in place and still get all that flavor implemented into this soup. Just leave yourself a little loop here. You don't have to be a Boy Scout to 
tie a perfect knot for this. Just something that's gonna keep it together because we are gonna be stirring it around into those onions here in about 10 minutes. On top of that, I'm gonna continue seasoning with a little bit more salt and then a big pinch of black pepper. Now, this is not the last time we're gonna be seasoning this dish. You wanna continuously season throughout the entire cooking process, not just at the beginning or the end here. So this has been going for about 20, 25 minutes now. We're starting to get our volume down. This is starting to smell so good. So now we're gonna start adding in some of these other flavors. So we're gonna go in with our uh, herbs here. And we're just gonna continue to stir that in there with it as this continues to caramelize down. And we've still got probably 15, 20 more minutes to go. So that's why we're adding some more. We're gonna go ahead and season it some more. I'm gonna add a little bit more black pepper at this point. But now we do wanna go ahead and get that garlic out of the oven. Now, if this is nice and soft like it looks to be, we should just be able to take a knife, sort of squeeze that garlic out of there. It's one of the benefits of this. It's so soft and you can really work with it at this point. Now, there's a few different benefits of roasting garlic like this, but it has a, a, a totally different flavor profile to me. It also has more of a, a pungent and a stronger flavor after you roast it like this. And instead of like chopping it up or mincing it, we're just gonna kind of smear it out into a little paste, add that right into this soup. I'm telling you, this adds so much flavor. Any chance I get to roast garlic, I'm, I'm doing it. It is so worth it. This is by far the hardest part. It's just waiting. I know, I know I keep saying that, but you really have to give this time. I'm not a patient man, but the longer you let this go, the better it's gonna be. It's so worth giving it the time it needs to caramelize appropriately. Next thing I wanna do is get some of this baguette ready. We've got a French baguette. I'm gonna go ahead and slice it sort of at a bias here into little pieces like this, something like this. We're gonna put that on a tray. I'll add a little pat of butter right on top of those. We'll put it right in the oven and let it toast for just a few minutes. So this has been going for almost an hour and this is pretty close to where we want it. I'll usually go a little bit longer to let it get darker, but I just don't have enough patience, I'm telling you. So I'm gonna pull that uh, bundle of herbs out. Now we're gonna deglaze this a little bit with some wine and some sherry. Got our sherry here. Splash of white wine. Let this cook for about a minute. This smells incredible. Now, we're, like I said, we're gonna continuously season throughout this entire cooking process. I'm gonna go in with some of our beef rub. This has salt, pepper, garlic, onion in it, so it's really good for this soup. And after a minute, we're gonna go in with our stock. We've got beef stock here. Now the last thing to do is just to let this simmer for another 15 minutes or so. Let it ever, all these flavors come together and we're good to go. All we have to do is we have to put it in our bowl, top with some of these, uh, this baguette, uh, top with Gruyere cheese, and then broil it. And that's just all there is to this. Of course, at this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and taste her seasoning. That is so good. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is I've got a block of Gruyere cheese. That's my favorite to use for this, and I'm just gonna shred some up. I actually put this in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Uh, this is a softer cheese, so it would normally kind of fall apart, but putting it in the freezer there will help you out with that. All right, now we're gonna take our soup here and we're gonna ladle it into this oven-proof bowl. Now, if you don't have an oven-proof bowl, what I would do is go ahead and take some baguettes and put your cheese on top of that and roll that. But what we're gonna do is put, uh, fill this up to the brim and then we're gonna add our baguettes. Now we're gonna take a few of our uh, toasted baguettes here. We're gonna take our cheese and layer plenty of that all over it. And the easiest way to transport this, we're gonna put it onto a little baking sheet right here. And we're gonna put this under the broiler for just a minute or two. All right, looky here. This looks so good. Now that, now that this cheese is nice and melted, it's got that golden brown color, we are done. 
Uh, it's going for a bite. You gotta get that toasted baguette. That's the best part of it to me with that melted cheese. Mmm, that is so good. It has such a depth of flavor. I love, you can taste that roasted garlic that we did. You can taste so many different flavors, but it's something so simple. And it does take a little bit of time, but this is so worth it. This is just so good. If you haven't tried this, you should. You can find the full recipe at crowfood.com along with our rubs and all of our merchandise. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, thanks for watching.